these things get everywhere and clog it up. I must have a nest of these somewhere. Oh, that's getting ugly. Hmm, better do something about that. If you're going to run full flood coolant on a machine, you'd better be prepared to deal with the tramp oil that comes along with it. I've only been running this coolant for a little while and it's already getting pretty badly contaminated. Only trouble with these built-in sumps is that there's not much room to do anything. Also, oil recovery systems are very expensive, but I have a very inexpensive solution that I'm going to implement today. Uh, costs about 30 to $40 in parts. The amount of work it takes to convert it all is minimal. And I think it's going to be a real game changer for the coolant that I'm running. So let's take a look. So you've seen inside the icky uh, coolant sump. And uh, the question I can hear you all cry, wait, don't reach for the next video button. Hear me out. Um, the question I hear at least one of you ask is, what is the cheap $30 to $40 solution to this disgusting problem? A fish aquarium pump. A food container. and some 304 stainless steel mesh. This is a luxury item. The two must-haves are the aquarium pump and the food container. What I'm going to do is put the aquarium pump inside this. We'll have a hole in the bottom here and the exit from the aquarium pump will come right out into the main sump. And then we'll cut some slots in this for the fluid in the main sump to circulate into this container. And now the motion in the fluid caused by the pump as it draws in from this container and pumps it out into the main sump will draw all of the oil into this container, keeping it in one place away from the pump that circulates to the machine and will make for a nice small area to scoop the oil from. The stainless steel mesh, I will fabricate into a custom fit strainer with a small rod to pull it out with, and that will live in the tank. And then when I want to remove the oil, I'll just pull the mesh out. Uh, okay, one problem here is that the pump has been put right in the window of the opening to the sump, which is very logical and reasonable thing to do but that's in the way of uh, anything that I want to put in there so having taken a measurement it looks like I can move this over a few inches give myself a bit more space in here for the tramp oil congregator Look at that. Ugh. Five eighths OD. So I need to cut a five eighths hole in here at the right spot. Pump has these suction pads on it. So we'll pump the out, put the outlet hose right about there. Right, see what I'm doing here? Nice big piece of lumber clamped in the vise. Um, now, do not use a normal twist drill to drill a hole in the sheet of plastic. It will grab and shatter the plastic. I tested that out and it definitely does that. Uh, you want sort of a spade bit or something like this.
get the idea. This doesn't need to come out this far, I may cut this short. Now that was a fair bit of butchery, but we're ready to try it. Now my, my level is actually low it being so dry this time of year. Actually it's, it's a good place for it. But the level is low, it will usually be much higher than this. I'll usually have it up another, at least another inch. But even so, the uh, intake of the pump is submerged. So this should work. I'm not going to route the cable just yet. I'll just use an extension cord to give it a try. Now, if you're going to do this, make sure that the outlet you use has a GFI capability. In my shop, all of the outlets are GFI protected. What's happening here is that the coolant level is too low and the pump flow rate is too high. So the small tank is being starved of fluid and floating up. But I think the um, the flow rate is too high. However, this pump is adjustable, so uh, I'm going to do that. Once the pump is throttled back, the reservoir is nice and stable and there's still plenty of flow around to get all of the tramp oil into the trapping reservoir where it belongs. That was a very successful, simple, inexpensive solution to what is a bit of a dirty problem. What I've set up today works incredibly well. I've played around with removing the tramp oil from the top and the pretty much the easiest way of doing it is to soak it off of there with a shop towel. So there you are, you, uh, you put your little reservoir in place, you let the coolant circulate and when the tramp oil collects you just soak it out of there. They're very easy and it keeps the coolant in good condition. A few other things that I did to finish the project off, and I'll show you a couple of pictures at the end. Um, I added uh, just hinges and a latch to the cover that goes over the coolant tank because taking screws out to remove that is a bit of a pain in the neck. So that was a simple thing to do. And I also uh, routed the power cable along with the power cable for the sump pump to keep it out of the way and protected. And that neatened everything up. I also uh, put a couple of stainless steel weights on top of the lid for the food container that's being used uh, just to hold everything down and then played with the flow a little bit more to get the uh, fluid circulating a little faster and a little better and that's working wonders to collect tramp oil and my coolant is now very clean uh, and I've topped it up and um, was turning some stainless steel with it today worked out really really well. 
So that's it, just about wraps everything up. Um, this is the coolant I'm going to try next. It's a semi-synthetic. It's by Trim, and it's called Microsol 585XT. Um, I've been doing a lot of research of the different coolants available, and this one ha is very well rated by a number of shops for long sump life and not rusting machines. It's about 65 bucks a gallon, something like that. Uh, and I plan to run at 10% concentration. Apparently it lasts a very long time. So uh, although it's fairly expensive to buy a gallon, it's an investment that will work out over time. So when I do that, I'll report back. Um, but that's it for now. That was a simple mod, very pleased with it. Uh, hopefully that uh, for anyone that wants to do this kind of thing, that's of use to you. Um, but in the meantime, all the very best. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks to everybody who subscribed so far. It actually continues to blow me away. The, um, the support is really appreciated. So if you're new and you've only just discovered this channel, I'd appreciate it if you could give me a like or subscribe. Um, I'm just trying to grow the channel a bit just for fun. Anyway, hope you pick up some information along the way. But in the meantime, all the very best. Stay safe and well, and good luck in 2024. I filled the main tank up to about four gallons, checked the concentration, checked the acidity level, got it all balanced out, and scooped out the oil from the trapping reservoir. And I think you'll agree, it looks much better. Quick addendum, if you're going to run full flood coolant, you have to maintain it. You must pay attention to the concentration and you must pay attention to the pH levels. Those are easily tested, refractometers are cheap, litmus papers are cheap. If you pay attention to those things, it is possible to run coolant on a machine, even infrequently, and not have the machine rust. That said, I take a great deal of care to blow down my machine with the compressed air, spray it down with WD-40, wipe it down after I'm done in a machining session. That's just cheap insurance. I like running full flood coolant, so that's what I do. I never had any rust on my old machine, so I know it can be done. Now, in the home shop, should you run coolant? Well, it's up to you. Do you have to? No, you don't. You can machine dry, just take care with your feeds and speeds. You can use WD-40. There are professionals that use that every day on their manual machines. Uh, or you can mix small amounts of coolant and apply it with a brush from a can. These are all viable options. You just have to choose the one that works for you. I like to run full flood coolant. Uh, just makes it easier for me. Can make a mess. It can go everywhere if you don't have the right splash guarding. So you have to do what you want to do. Be seeing you.